back to Live and Breathe Horses and we're going on with this wonderful collection of stories about the life and work of Tom Dorrance in this beautiful book, More Than a Horseman, put together by his wife Margaret Dorrance and John St Ryan. And today's story comes from no other than Ray Hunt himself. And this, most of these stories have been sent in um, by the request of Margaret in written form. And this one says at the top that it was recorded by John St. Ryan on 10-15-96. So that would be 15th of October for British people. <laughs> Where we put the day, then the month. And Americans, of course, do the opposite. Anyway, when I look back at the time working on those cow outfits, it was just a way of life. When I look back at it, how fortunate I was. We pulled a wagon, you see. There were no fences. It was all open rodeos, several outfits, all in the same place. So we had reps from them different outfits. So when you gathered, you always sent a rep to represent your ranch. When I look back at it, it was like back in them Charlie Russell days. But around this time, I had this colt named Ondo. I really liked him, but I was having quite a bit of trouble with him. Every time you went to saddle this horse, you knew you were in for a ride. I wanted to show him. Well, you can't show a horse in a reigning class and a saddle bronc class at the same time. When you'd go down the fence and turn the cow back and find you're astride the horse's head, you're in a saddle bronc ride. When this horse went to buck, you wasn't going to talk him out of it, knock him out of it. <laughs> I'd go to run a cow down the fence and this horse would get halfway down and then just blow up and start bucking. I knew I had a problem. Now, I knew Bill Dorrance and thought he might be able to help. When Bill suggested I go talk to his brother, Tom, and that Tom might be able to help me with this colt. But he said not to tell Tom that I wanted to show him. You see, Tom wasn't doing his thing so you could show a horse, win a trophy or a ribbon. The horse was too important for him for any of that crap. So when I went to see Tom, I never said anything and he helped me fix the horse up. Pretty soon after, a day or two, this horse was going great. Tom said, you want to show this horse? I said, well, you know, if it kind of comes handy. Tom said, ah, kids will be riding him. He knew, but anyway, I went ahead and showed him seven or eight times that year. Cow Palace, Reno, Monterey, and won him hands down. Of course, I give Tom all the credit. Hell, I just rode him. You see, Tom presented it to me. It might not be the way he does it, I'm not saying that, but he did turn my life around to where my horses are a damn sight happier. And, of course, I am too. He's went so much further now where he, than where he was then. And, of course, that's how it should be. And I hope that one day I'm further along. But why did he have to tell me? I have never known anyone like him. And I don't think I ever will. I've searched all over the world looking for another person with his ability with horses and I can't find anyone that comes even close to what he had. I can't explain what it was that was in him but that quality he had came from him and went into the horse. You couldn't see what he was doing, it just worked. To this day and for the rest of my life I will be trying to understand it. And Tom he can be setting on a horse and go sound asleep, then just wake up and be ready to go. We'd be starting some older horses and I'd be working on some old horse, some old snide 
that I didn't dare get on because I couldn't ride him and he'd say, you want to change saddles, Ray? He'd have a rope on him and I'd say, yeah. So I'd be changing saddles and he'd be sitting there asleep. Get ready to go and he's ready. He could just shut everything out and then come right back. He was the most self-disciplined human I ever was around. How he could shut things out, gee. When I look back now, he would come if he had a day or two a week or two. And if I was busy, had some horses to shoe, had some horses to ride, had to get somebody to do day work, he'd kind of shut that out. He'd say, I'll be back in a few days. I couldn't imagine. I mean, he was welcome to stay. He was welcome to go where I was going, but he was pretty apt to leave because I might be riding a horse, but I'm thinking about some other horses I should be shoeing or thinking I should be helping that neighbor, neighbor over there move some cattle. You see, when you're working with Tom with one of these horses, you're not thinking about building a gate or fence or doing a damn thing else but that right there, at that moment, that's where your mind is. And I didn't understand that at the time, why he didn't hang around. I had some horses to shoe, I had some neighbours to help, I had to put some hay up, I had a jillion things to do. And you know what, he wasn't mean about it, but I couldn't really devote all of my thoughts to that horse at that time. Now I know. Tom, would come and help me work a bunch of colts and they'd all be just a bunch of lambs for him. But then he'd hand them over to me and leave and within a day I had a can of snakes. The horses liked him, wanted to be around him. They looked forward to it. Tom would be down in the barn talking to someone and the colts he'd been working with the day before would hear his voice and start nickering at him. He was just a short, bow-legged cowboy who never kept any horse of his own, but he was a genius with horses. He was the most amazing person I'll ever have the privilege of knowing. I think it's quite emotional, that one. Thank you for joining me today. Keep tuning into the line and I look forward to seeing you next time.